There'd be a lot of poop in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a six foot alligator go swinging through the air and slam into a tree. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural, lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, Mothman. Oh yeah, Mothman. A great white shark was stolen. Oh, someone stole a shark? I got stuff for you you don't even know about. She's a witch. She turned me into a newt. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Anything could be possible. It's really big mm -hmm. abduction vibes. Holy moly. It sounds like you were abducted. And it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going and going. And she goes, what the f Welcome back to Cribbs of the Corn Podcast. I am the great and energetic Mr. E. And I am in danger, Jay. <laughs> and together we're going to bring you this amazing Wednesday special. Ooh. So yeah, remember everybody, for season four... Last time I had one of them was a club sandwich. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, we got to do the joke again. You, got, you got rid of the button. Yeah, okay, do the joke again. It's too late. Just do it. Pretend Just say I it again. It. Okay, club sandwich. Oh, real funny. <laughs> Real funny. All right, move on. I, it's, Turn it off. I, there you go. Okay. And like it's. I, I didn't know how long that button was. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little quicker. Uh, no. So once again, remember for season four, everybody, we're going to switch up the encounter based or the uh, interview based Wednesday episodes. We're going to switch it more towards an encounter based and a listener story based. Uh, format for the most part right just doing the documentaries and stuff like that we're going to be a little more limited on time and interviewing and scheduling people so it's a little easier for us so if you want to submit your encounter or your story with any kind of paranormal any kind of cryptozoological i don't care if you've seen an angel i would love to hear about it uh all that kind of stuff uh you do uh, submit it to the email at cryptids of the corn podcast at gmail.com so it's the name of our show plus the word podcast at gmail.com so we got a handful of them already, but we're always looking for more. We actually need uh, at least 25 of them for season four. Well, roughly. Minimum. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah. At least, I said at least, which right, means yeah. minimum. Oh, well, yeah. It's touche. <laughs> touche. Uh, but that's it for that kind of stuff. Anything you got to think of to add in there, Jay? Uh, just, uh, you know, we got the new shop set up. Oh! On, our, on our website. Uh, the shop's up and live. Yeah, so you can go. Congratulations, to Bob. As our 001 first he literally customer. literally the first customer on the new website. It was live for about 15 minutes, and Bob bought, bought a T-shirt right off the rip. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Bob's been a great supporter of the show for a long time. We appreciate Bob. So, yeah, you can find that on our website, uh, creepersofthecorn.com, and go to the shop section and check out our store. Also, the links are below. Correct. All right. I think it's enough of that, yep. that kind of stuff. All right. Yeah. The energy's starting to wear off. I can tell. If anybody didn't listen to Monday's episode, I'm a brand new father, which is awesome. It's an amazing experience, but it's like, I miss sleep. I'm about to flip your chair at some point. I'm 300 pounds. If you can get over here and flip this chair while I'm in it, I'd be very impressed. I've done a few push-ups in my day. Yeah, pushed up your own body. Oh, yeah. I lift every day. Okay. Lift myself out of bed. Well, good thing we're not alone. Right. Who are we joined with today? Why don't you or do joined it? By it? Okay, I'll do it. So we are joined by a special guest, soon to be a reoccurring guest, I, I, I assume. Let me introduce the world and all of our friends in the podcast world to intern Ryan. Woo! Woo! Hello, welcome. hello. Welcome, I'm Ryan. Intern Ryan. Can you hear me all fine? Yep. Yep. We hear you loud and clear. All right. Awesome. How do I do this? <laughs> well, uh, why don't I've you? I've never been on before. Introduce myself. Yeah, why don't you introduce yourself, intern Ryan? How did how did this come about? Yeah, so yeah, let's do that first. Give us a little bit of your background. Uh, pretend like we don't know you. Uh, give us a little bit of your background, what you're going to school for, and then kind of how you found us and whatnot. Okay, okay. So I am a 21 year old biology student. I'm going to my senior year of college for that. I'm also a psych minor, but I don't, who knows if I'm going to do anything with that. I should just fill out classes. <laughs> uh, I 
mean, I in terms of how this came about, like, also I'll say I'm from outside Philadelphia, from a, a town called Downingtown, which a more notable town, like 20 minutes from Westchester, for anyone that's familiar with this area. His address um, will be in the description below. Yep, yep. I'm at the end. I will dox myself. So <laughs> look forward to that. Uh, <laughs> so. Sorry, because I season one. If everybody doesn't know, if no, you're no, new just to the stop. Show. Move on, move forward, move forward. <laughs> the, okay, James, Ryan, keep James. talking. Ryan, keep talking. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I muted Jay for a second. Jay's. I'm on this episode. <laughs> Don't. Oh, That's right. You guys are going crazy for me right now. Uh, Jay just it's is enough upset of that. About it's enough of that. Stuff. It's enough of that. I can continue, Ryan. Continue, continue where you left off. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, like I said, from outside Philadelphia, uh, lived here my whole life. I also go down for the summers. I go to uh, Sea Isle City, to the beach. So, I'm um, like, which that's like 20 minutes from the Pine Barrens, where the Jersey Devil is supposed to be. Ooh. Uh, unfortunately, never any close encounters with that. Well, maybe unfortunately. It'd be cool, but I don't want to die. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, in, in terms of how this came about, uh, my one cousin, Brian, not, not to be confused with Ryan, uh, <laughs> he is, like, a big fan of you guys, and, I don't know, like, probably, like, around, like, two months ago, he was just, we were just talking, and he was telling me about, like, the podcast was to talk about you, uh, he was like, you should check them out, like, I think you're cool, like, you think that they're cool, they talk about, like, you know, cryptids, and, but they talk about, like, the biological side, too, since, you know, I'm a biology major, uh, so, yeah, I started, like, listening to your guys' stuff, like, around two months ago, so, not like a day one fan, unfortunately. Uh, there weren't many no day one fans. fans. There's like six of them. Yeah. <laughs> and three of them are in this room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, he was telling me about starting listening to you guys. Uh, and it was awesome stuff. I, I always thought it was really interesting, especially the biological side of it. Uh, but I've been looking for an internship for my biology degree, like, this whole past semester at school and it was coming up right to the, to the end. Like, like this past like Memorial day, I was hanging out with my cousin Brian again. And I was telling him, like, Oh man, like I need an internship. It was just like, I was, I was telling everyone in my family, do you guys know anyone? Like, <laughs> like let them know that I would work for them. Uh, and he was like, okay. And then a few days later, he's like, yeah. I remember, he's like, remember that podcast? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you want me to like text them and see if like, I can connect you guys. See if they would maybe get you to do an internship. I'm like, I guess if you could just do that and then like literally like an hour later he texted me back he's like yep I texted them like and they're just like they're into it I'm like okay <laughs> and he gave me your number and we started talking and then the rest is history we are now so Brian at home thank you very much for setting us all up but I thought he was screwing with me first just so everybody knows because <laughs> he's like I you know he's Brian and he's like well you know my cousin Ryan I'm like okay funny man like Daryl and my yeah. other brother Daryl. Yeah, and so I thought he was like I thought it was a joke at first, and I thought because we were at the bowling alley drinking. I, it was it was a euchre night. Oh, okay, remember it was a uh, it was I don't remember. I know those you nights. don't remember that. I know you don't remember Tuesday nights, but yeah. So that was funny at first because I just like all right, yeah. Ryan's gonna message me over here because <laughs> Brian's messaging me right now, and then yeah, Ryan is gonna message me later. <laughs> good, yeah, good one. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of any more yeah, that's like it, that. <laughs> It's a little confusing. But so, your guys' mics are like going crazy for me right now. I can like hardly hear you. It's going all roboty. Oh no. I wonder if that'll turn up on the uh it, it didn't last time. Okay. Uh we'll figure it out. Just ignore it for now. As long as you can understand okay. us, I guess. Yeah, just ignore I can it. Kind of understand you. Uh so what is your kind of focus on in your biology degree? So I go to a liberal arts college, so I have to take classes from, like, all over, not just for biology, but for, like, I have to take classes like, everything, but even with biology, it's, like, which makes sense, too, but, uh, so I've taken a good amount of classes on the organismal side and the microbio side, and I think I'm more interested in the microbio side, I, and I think that's just because, like, I don't know, that just clicks, clicks with me a little more than, like, the organismal side, but I still think the organismal side is awesome. But it's like, yeah, I definitely know more nitty gritty stuff with like microbiology and like cell bio and stuff. So, um, so you're going which I'm hoping more when I do research will be useful. Yeah. So yeah, so you're kind of more like uh, what we'd say when I worked for Midwest Biodiversity Institute. It was basically a clean biologist versus a dirty biologist. 
And yeah. we were the dirty biologists because we had to stand in the poo water. <laughs> That's the big definition, pretty much. If you have to stand in poo yeah. water. You're a dirty biologist. You're a dirty biologist. <laughs> That adds up. That that play that tracks. I know the clean biologists would get barbecue for lunch every day and stay in their lab and do all the cellular stuff and all the, and we'd be out standing in poop water eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm, well, that happens in the hot sun because Chicago doesn't have any trees. <laughs> You'd pray. You'd pray to see a tree on the river because you're like that's where we're having lunch today, boys. Yep. I don't care if it's right next to a sewer outflow. Nope. It's, there's shade. It's shade. Yeah. No, but yeah, so this is awesome, Ryan. So we do kind of have like a topic for today's general episode. But before we get rolling into that, I asked you to bring your favorite cryptid. Okay. So I think it was kind of between two. Like I said, I just mentioned the Jersey Devil before. And the reason I like the Jersey Devil is literally just because I, I kind of have a connection to it since I, I spent my summers down near the Pine Barrens. It's like every time we drive down there. We, we go right through the Pine Barrens, total dead zone in terms of, like, cellular stuff. Uh, that's how you know. Um, and every time we go through, my dad jokes about, like, the Jersey Devil getting us and stuff. <laughs> um, but it's, like, I guess that's not – I don't find that to be, like, the most interesting cryptid. I just, like – I just like it because right. it's, like, right near me. Uh, well, my, I think my favorite cryptid is probably the Flatwoods Monster. Oh, that's a good one. Braxy. Yeah, I re- – I, yeah, I really like the Flywoods monster. I think it's super interesting, and it's as I, I love Mothman too. But it's like, I think I think Flatwoods is is a cooler West Virginia monster, Appalachia. Um, so, so what? So if Braxy's your favorite because we did. You know, Braxy's a really interesting one because it's got a lot of options of what it could be. Had a, a handful of eyewitnesses, actual yeah. uh, fluid and stuff collected. What do you think Braxy was? Well, I think that's another thing is, like, I always love seeing, like, what could be a natural explanation. It's just, like, if it's not a monster, like, what could it be? Uh, and I don't, to be honest, the, the like, accepted explanations for it I don't think are very compelling. So I, like, think that Braxy is probably an alien or something like that. Uh, well, it's because, like, you know, the what, from what I see with it, like, what people are trying to explain it is, like, it was, like, a barn owl, and it was, like, these people saw saw a barn owl up in a tree, and it's like, yes. And then, but there was like there was like a like a like an air like an aircraft signaling thing, like putting a red light on his face that made it like have red eyes, and it's like, and the tree was like its pleated skirt. I mean, I'm just assuming everyone knows what the flat. Yes, yes, right. That's oh, that's yes. fair here. It's, I think it's yeah. supposed to be ten foot tall, and like a barn owl's like I don't know, like a foot and a half maybe tall, and it's like even if it was a shadow. And like it was just a really big shadow. It's like I don't. How would it have like the detail that they say it had? Right. Like, I just don't find the explanation very compelling. There's a lot of like weird stuff that would have had to come together to make something look like that. I'm right there with you for that part of it because it's just like the explanations are some of the dumbest stuff ever. I mean, it could always be a sandhill crane. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, at least the Mothman kind of look like an owl. <laughs> and yeah. you just be like, it was a great horned owl. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Makes sense. That tracks. It's the same shape. Yeah. Or no, it was a sandhill crane. But Braxy, that's a whole different story. No, like, they yeah. were saying, like like Ryan was saying, they were saying there was, like, like they, they had to have, like, 85 different weird phenomena to stack on top of each other to make it look like the Flatwoods monster versus yeah. just being... A uh, Flatwoods monster, and I'm sure some tenured professor did some exclusive oh, investigation into it and confirmed all those things did add up and make it that. So what do we? Uh... Huh? Oh no, never mind. That was Patreon this week. Yeah, we talked about yeah the uh, everybody. If you if you're on Patreon, you know we just did the Enfield horror. Yeah, and the, some of the scientific explanations for that were the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. Right, and I went on a little rant against them. The people coming up with those explanations. Do you know what the Enfield in- horror is? I don't. Okay, so you know what a creeper is from Minecraft? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this was a creeper, basically. It's pretty much green. Three, it has three legs. It's green. Uh, it had a big mouth full of big teeth. It had big red eyes. Uh, but it was little. It was only it was three foot tall. Four foot. Three to four foot tall. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, people seen that thing, and well, don't give too much more away. It's our it's a Patreon episode. That's what I'm saying. A little, and a little sneak peek here. Yeah, and uh, 
what the what the university said was it was was the stupidest thing ever. Yeah, it was borderline uh just dumb. Just dumb. It was just dumb. Yes. So yeah, so Braxy's a good pick. I mean, everybody loves the moth, man. Braxy did win our uh, our our tournament. No, of, she didn't. She didn't. Who'd won? I swear, Braxy won. Braxy didn't win. Yes, huh? Rachel was really mad. Oh, uh, whatever. Braxy we did, we made did the March finals. Madness. Braxy made the ago. final four. I know that much. Because <laughs> you got mad. No, because Bremer. It lo- no, it wasn't Braxy. It was something else. Check stupid. the tape. Probably Kappa or something stupid. Check the tape. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay. So then what else did you say? Uh, the Jersey Devil, which is just a giant hammer-headed bat. Yeah. What'd you, is that what you called it? Is that what it was? Yeah, an African hammer-headed bat. Yeah, it could be. Fits the description very well. Especially the original ones, because the original ones weren't like the giant, like, eight-foot-tall horse demon that yeah, people say now. It was like two-foot-tall for most show. most of the sightings. Well, when it flew out of the womb, that's how big it was. <laughs> when it came out of the womb, it was a baby. It was a normal human. Oh yeah, okay. It was. Yeah, that sprouted wings and flew out the chimney after they sh- after she dropped it. Oh, that's what it was. Don't it's, drop you your baby. Sh- yeah, you don't shake the baby. Yeah. Literally. Oh, that's why you don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's why yeah, you don't. Don't want it to turn to a beat the demon baby. Oh. That's why they went through. I just had to do all those safety things for before they let us take the baby home. Anti Jersey Devil like uh, uh, yeah, precaution training. Anti yeah. anti cryptid pro- proclamations <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> Don't don't shake the baby, otherwise it'll turn into a Jersey Devil. Right. Don't feed it after midnight till one or till twelve ten a.m. or it'll turn into a gremlin. Gremlin, yep. Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm so tired. I'm sorry. I'm normally the train behind these episodes, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, what's our uh, what are, what topic are we gonna be covering today? So let's let's get into our topic with Ryan and. Oh, let's before we do that, real quick, let's let's tell what Ryan's gonna be doing, so I may put him on the spot. Oh, okay. So Ryan's well, what, some of the Ryan's things he's going to work on is kind of doing some like post for us on the social medias, you know, whether it's a cool thing he researched for the week. He's also helping a lot behind the house, uh, like with working on research for scripts and like the se- he's already working on the season four opener for me, uh, or at least he, he knows what he's supposed to be doing for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at you. Yeah, I know. Don't say <laughs> anything though. Jay doesn't know. Yeah, don't tell me anything. Um, no spoilers. I won't give it away. No, so Ryan's doing like a lot of that, like research behind. But you should see a post about once a week for like it'll be the same post, but on all the social media sites, you guys should see like a research Ryan intern Ryan's research section. There we go, intern Ryan research section. Uh, he's also going to do some stuff with us uh, with the Patreon members on the Discord. Uh, yeah, I think and the other stuff like with filming and research that way, and like that's coming down the pipe. All right, that's exciting. All right, you ready for today's cryptid? Let's hear it. What we got? Slide Rock Bolter. Have you ever heard of the Slide Rock Bolter? No. Where you find this? <laughs> you don't know what the Slide Rock Bolter is? No. Well, don't 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 rake him over the coals. Just oh, jeez. He's like, new. Look, man, I'm so new. Yeah, you can't. Imagine a blue whale. It's not anymore. Imagine a blue whale. On the top of a mountain that sli- it produces a lot of saliva to slide down the mountain to eat everything in its path and then slowly crawls back up to the top to do it all over again. That, that's insane. <laughs> that is an insane just concept. It's very, I'm, I'm looking at it. It's very, uh, the actual reported like encounters with it back in the olden days, like 1700s were very fish-like. It was really described as very uh, angler fish or like stone fish or like sea scorpion fish. Is this like a lumberland tail? Yeah, it's, it gets lumped into that, but it's not its full origins. Okay. But yeah, so do you know what uh, the lumberland monsters are? What is it called? The, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're, just, they're just fun stories when lumberjacks would get too drunk. Creatures of the yeah, lumberwoods. All right, so you ready for some names? What is the Slide Rock Bolter? Mm. Uh, author. So this this is an author's name. I want to be clear. The author's name is Cox. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody at home knows. So Cox describes the different creature uh, that the logging industry would conjure up late at night in their shanties when they collect the lumberjack tales for the United States. So this, actually, this is one of his books. Uh, I know it's been rewritten a couple times, but anybody that has the Lumberland, Cox is one of the guys that did it. Uh, but here's a little thing what he said about the Slide Rock Bolter. 
there has been much unease produced by the existence of the slide rock bolter in the mountains of Colorado, where in the summers the woods are becoming overrun with tourists. Only the highest mountain slopes with more of a 40, more than a 45 degree angle does this terrifying animal reside. It has a huge head, small eyes, and a mouth that extends backwards over its ears, resembling that of a sculpin in some ways. Everybody at home, sculpin's a fish. Okay, I was going to ask. Yes. Its tail, is, its tail is comprised of divided flippers with large grabbing hooks that fasten around the mountain or ridge peaks. It frequent, uh, its frequent stays are there immobile for days, keeping an eye out for tourists and any other unfortunate creatures that might fall into its gulch. The bolter comes down like a, okay, tobogan? Uh, I don't know what that is. I'd have to see it. Uh, scooping its victims as it goes. It's toboggan? Momen- yes, toboggan. Okay. Its momentum carries it to the next slope where it slaps its tail over the ridge and waits. It is the perf- it, At this perfect moment, after spotting a tourist, it will lift its tail, loosen its hold on the mountain. Its small eyes will become fixed on the unfortunate tourist, and its drool will sl- uh, will drool thin. Sl- don't don't laugh at me. I'm not at you. The drool will, its drool, blah, 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 will be like grease or from the corners of its mouth, which helps it generate acceleration. I'm laughing because it's targeting tourists. Just yeah, just eats people. <laughs> like the local local. Oh, there's my guy. It's the guy in the Hawaiian shirt and jean shorts. You don't eat the locals. <laughs> exactly. Uh, there are reports of taking groups of tourists quite a or quite far back uh, in the hills, where entire groups of travelers were drowned in one scoop. The animal poses a threat to the woodlands as well as the tourists. Many of the or many a draw through the spruce covered slopes have been reduced to rubble, with these trees being uprooted and cutted by the slice of the bolter as it crashes down the peaks from above. Hmm. So we got like a size description on this thing. Big, like uh, like a hundred foot long. So a big boy. Like 100, I've heard like up to 1,000 foot long. It's literally like, so uh, these are shale peaks. So what people think it does at night it, or at, during the day, it kind of like sh- like shuffles its body into the shale so it, it's not seen, and then it waits. So what do we know about the Lumberland creatures? Do you remember, Jay, where they almost all come from? Well, they're all originated from Lumberjack campfire stories, basically. But what was the purpose of them? Um, to explain uh, unexplainable phenomena they're just they're encountering in the woods. Yes. So most lumberland, like one hundred percent right. Most lumberland creatures are d- the were like Jay said, invented to explain natural phenomena the lumberjacks couldn't explain any other way. So in this area of Colorado, there was much much overharvesting of wood, hmm. which was causing like out of nowhere these giant lo- rock slides, killing people. There was a whole town that disappeared one night from them over harvesting wood on the side of a mountain, because uh, the rock slide literally killed like a thousand people in one night. So what is like the tourists, the only ones that don't know the safe spots to walk? That's kind of like the gist of it. Is like you're you're going into uneven areas and stuff like that, and you're going on slopes and. Mm. But so what they would see is these giant looks like slide marks. It looks like a big crocodile would ever slid down, and they'd see all the destruction and all the trees crushed and. They'd be like, it had to be a monster, because that wasn't like that yesterday. Hmm. Another phenomena, which is an actual phenomena that uh, nobody really can uh, explain, is the Colorado Mountains, specifically uh, Lizard Head Mountain, which is where like one of the, the Slide Rock Bolter's main homes is, is, its eyes are still seen to this day. Oh. So on these tall shale cliffs, uh, sometimes they're four or five feet apart, you'll see two what looks like campfires that are even, about five feet apart, glowing. But what it's said to be is the slide rock bolter's eyes reflecting, watching for prey. It is. Uh, and this is weird. This is like one of the lights, like one of like the brown mountain lights or like the like the Mimsy lights and stuff like that, to where it's still seen, and nobody really knows what it causes it. Uh, before the, like, kind of before and during the bolter, they'd say it was, uh, they said it was Native Americans having fires, because they knew the white man wouldn't go up that far because it was so dangerous. Hmm. So it was like kind of a safe spot they could go to and not, you know, not worried about getting murdered in their sleep for being a Native American. As what used to happen. Yeah. Uh, so there's that, but it's weird. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, you don't think there's a chance that it is a pair of eyes up there. I don't think that the glow is eyes, personally. 
at least not like because they're like I don't know the slide rock bolter. You know, I don't like the lumberland cryptids are fun, but they're not real. <laughs> you don't yeah. know. I don't. <laughs> I don't. You're right. Uh, but they are fun. Yeah, they are. The slide rock bolter is one of my favorites. Uh, my slide rock bolter is probably my favorite of the lumberland cryptids. Cause it's like a giant mountain whale fish. I was just gonna say. Yeah, I was gonna give Ryan one guess. <laughs> oh, they're all goofy. That's a part of it too. You got to be really goofy, <laughs> like the squonk. I feel like a lot of like North American, especially from like that sort of area, like Colorado, the Rockies. Like a lot of those like fables and just like cryptids and stuff, and creatures from there are all like ridiculous. Like they're just funny. You know, like I've always thought that, like especially like. I don't know, like Paul Bunyan and his giant blue bowl, like that—that that was always absurd to me, even when I was a kid. <laughs> Babe, the big like, blue bowl. They just have a yes, yeah. ox. ox, ox, ox. Sorry, yeah, they just have like an obsession with making giant creatures. They also the have stuff the like woods. the cactus cat, uh, which is just a cat made out of cactuses that lives out there. <laughs> and they have the what the hell is it called? Uh, River dinos? No, that's not a lumberland. Oh. It's, the boat dog. Literally, it's a dog that's shaped like a boat that you can use for a boat if you need to. See, trust dogs. Especially <laughs> yeah. large boat-shaped dogs. Boat-shaped dogs. Boat-shaped dogs. It's like from Dumb and Dumber, the, the dog-shaped ca- truck or van, yeah. whatever yes, it is. except it's the exact yeah. opposite. Well, no, it's a dog. It's a, it's a vehicle-shaped dog. You don't know that. It was an actual dog. It is a dog. Whose? The, the, the vehicle. I'm from Dumb and Dumber. Oh, oh, it's sentient. I didn't it know. It is. It's sentient. Yes. I was unaware. <laughs> till they gave, till they traded it into the pound for a mini bike. <laughs> I just can't get. This is. I'm so tired. I, I apologize for everybody at home. Like, I'm mentally dying. But no, the slide rock bolter kind of just encapsulates perfectly, in my opinion, like the the lumberland folklore kind of stuff, to where it's this big, awesome monster. And it eats people, and it eats bears, and it produces saliva to slide down the mountain, and it causes all this natural destruction. And then, because for the lumberjacks, you know, they weren't like they weren't seeing a lot of these rock sites. They were happening at night due to like pressure changes and stuff like that. So they would just hear the noise, and you would just hear the tumbling, this bellowing of rocks coming down the canyon. And Man. Th- wouldn't it sound like a monster? If t- yeah. Hundreds of tons of rock bellowing down. Mm. And then you go out the next day, and there's just a whole like chunk of forest is gone. Just slid off, yeah. And you're like, well, that slide rock bolter got a raccoon last night. <laughs> One raccoon <laughs> walked in his path. What's up with like the saliva though? Was there any? Did they see something that they thought was saliva, or was it just like the mud? I I'm gonna assume that they had to, like one guy around the campfire once was like, kind of knew what friction was, <laughs> yeah. and was like. Well, how do they do that and not rip their bellies apart, huh? It's like, oh, they salivate grease, and that's they slide down the mountain like that. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> of course. Makes sense. That tracks. Right. I mean, whales are, you know, they're blubbery. They're, they, they burn their blubber for, it's like grease, you know? That's just maybe oozes out of them, too. Slide rock bolter. <laughs> like a hippo sweating blood. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? You didn't know that? I, you're joking, right? They, it's not true blood, but they do sweat a red enzyme that uh, I think does, it does have hemoglobin in it as sunscreen. Mm. Wow, did not know that. It looks like they're sweating blood. That's frightening. If they, if it post couldn't get any more scarier, do you ever have you ever microwaved a hot dog and seen how they get sweating? That's what a hippo looks like. Oh, okay, kind of burnt skin, and then like these, like a s- stick of dynamite after it's been sitting for mm-hmm. a while. There you go. Really interesting analogy. <laughs> the the hot dog. That's what people come here for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, do you think the slide rock boulder is real, Jay? I mean, if it if it falls into the lumber la- lumber woods, you know, uh, sort of creatures. I got one thing to say. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Precisely. Precisely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Who knows? Anything could be possible. <laughs> Oh, man, you just love those buttons, don't you? Uh, yeah. So what about you, Ryan? What's your overall opinions on the Slide Rock Bolter? I mean, I so badly want that to be real just because that's so insane. But I'm, maybe. I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's definitely just, like you said, just a way to explain some weird, like a, 
like rock slides that lumberjacks didn't know, but I think the slide rock bolter is a, a much more fun explanation. Do you think there's any way an angler fish or a whale or maybe even a pinniped could evolve to be this creature without without having some kind of, I don't even know. I guess if they die underneath the rocks, you know, that's explainable. Maybe they turn to rock. We don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of fossil evidence to suggest anything like this ever existed. True. True. They, they what make, do you think, Ryan? What do you do you think this could do you think this could evolve? And if it could, what family group would you put it to? Oh man. I mean <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if that would happen, right? Like cuz even if a fish, a big fish made its way up onto a mountain somehow, right? And then continued to survive there for generations. Eventually, it would just like stop being a big fish, right? Like it would it would it would evolve to better suit the mountain. From like the slide rock you're culture. describing yeah, like the slide rock Well, it's like it's still like a giant whale. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I got why would it. it? Why would it evolve to just like grab onto the side of a mountain with like its fin or whatever, and then spit out grease so it can slide <laughs> down? Like, I don't think that would happen. But I don't. Know. It's filling a niche. I mean, I'm not an authority. Yeah, <laughs> that's a hell of a I just niche. Feel like there'd be easier ways for it to. to to survive. They have a little that. legs. Wouldn't it be funny if like they were real, but they weren't this giant creature? It's like a two foot tall little thing that just causes like landslides from above. He just caught it. Nothing actually. The only thing that slides down is the actual landslide, but it's like a little like gnome guy at the top. Like, yeah, I got that tourist. Like a Tommy knocker. Yeah, Tommy knocker. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's a Tommy knocker. <laughs> it's just been a Tommy knocker the whole it's time. Been a Tommy knocker the whole time. <laughs> How many times can we say Tommy knocker? Tommy knocker. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. Like, to me, the big thing is, how does it get to the top of the mountain? I don't know. Did it like? Did does it, get it blown up there somehow? Is like, it just like a life cycle thing? Like, it spores at the bottom, floats the spores float back up to the top, it restarts its life cycle, and then once it's ready, it falls again. Yeah, like they only have like they have till they get to the bottom of the mountain to be alive. Yeah. So or, you gotta be like you gotta pick your battles maybe, real. Maybe you can like burrow. Back up, back up, ooh, mm. back up the mountain. It's tremors, or ooh, it's tremors. Oh, is this just a graboid? It could just be a graboid, <laughs> but it goes. It uses gravity to attack, and it has to, you know. Or maybe I mean? people are just mistaking it for using gravity. It may just be like uh, half in the dirt. Maybe the tremors cause a landslide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we're on to something. I was saying maybe it adapted to like, you know, have a winch tied around its tail, so every time it slides down, it just cranks itself back up to the top mm. of the mountain. Like uh, it must be a cousin to the Very wampus cat. <laughs> the wampus cat shoots a hook shot back at the dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. It he just has it in the tail. Yeah, and retra yeah, yeah. See, it's a retractable tail. Yeah. <laughs> Biologically sound, right? There's two biologists in here, so. Yeah, for sure. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of occurrences of, of creatures evolving to have grapple shot tails. <laughs> Let's it's see. It's a very common phenomenon. <laughs> I can think of a couple, but none probably bigger. Than the head of a pin. Well, what's one? Just give me one. I need There's a couple like really tiny, like I can't even think of what they're called. They look terrifying. They look like uh, they're a little type of like mic like macro crustacean. They're real, real tiny, but they like kind of shoot like a little section off their like their butt. And they pull themselves to well, it. They pull stuff to them. Okay, all right. So it could work the other way. It, it could, could work very well. Could pretty cool. But they, once again, that you could probably fit a hundred of them on the end of this pen. Yeah. Hmm. You know, you just scale that up over. Millions of years of adaptation. Reverse chameleon. Or what if it's a, um, oh, no, cyanophore. Mm. 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 Explain. So you got multi-organisms that are, work as the retraction part. You got one part that produces all the grease. You got another part that just opens its mouth and chews. And you got other parts that digest and disperse all the uh, tourist parts to all the different parts of the body. Think about it. Think about it. Yep, and then one, you know, one thing has its defense mechanism. It's the eye glow. Hmm, giant cyanophore. Now the eye glow thing, we haven't really tackled that yet, but that is a weird section of this story. Gives yeah. it some credence. Well, I don't know if it gives that some credence. I think it may be some other kind of paranormal thing happening. Because, like, uh, Ryan, are you familiar with the Brown Mountain Lights at all? Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. Them. Yeah, they're they're like crazy because they happen like. Every night. Yeah. Like, and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people have seen them. 
I know a couple, even a couple like governors have seen him and stuff like that. Like it's literally probably in my opinion, it's, it's a slap on a paranormal phenomena because it's repeatable. It really, it it's, you can go out like four or five times a week and see it three of those four times. Yeah. And it's just, it walks right off a cliff and it's these big, you know, big lights. Like it's, it's always happening. So this is one of those kind of things. So th- it points to there being real phenomena there. Do I personally think it's an anglerfish the size of a semi truck careening down the mountain? <laughs> no. I think we'd have one by now. Maybe. Yeah, like how do you miss that? It landed in somebody's pasture and gets stuck in the fence. Because <laughs> it crawls so slow to go back up. Just gets stuck behind a fence. This 100 foot thing is like a little four foot tall fence. It's just not stuck. <laughs> It happened to the graboids. They ran into concrete and they they broke their skull. Oh, I guess you're right, actually. Because he wasn't prepared to hit concrete. wasn't ready for it. Wasn't not like right. not like there's any rocks ever underneath the ground, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> they could ever run into from time to time. But that concrete wall wasn't Remember, ready. Remember, it messed with their uh, their sonar. What? Oh, the graboids had sonar to avoid all the rocks. Oh, okay. But there was something going on there with like either the radio station or something messing with its sonar. That's is that is that really what happened? Yeah. Okay, I don't remember. I love Tremors. I've watched them all, all, all like right. 13 of them. I've only watched one and two. Ah, uh, like Frozen in Hell and uh, and Squawker Island or whatever the hell it was called. No idea. Made for TV movies. Oh, they're great. They're great. <laughs> Sorry, everybody at home once again. I am like borderline about to pass out. I think you're doing just fine. But no, it's the Cyrock Bolter. Like, I love it. Do we have art of this one yet? We do not. Everybody at home. P.O. Box number 758 Ohio 45810. It'll be in the notes send me, below. Send Show me notes. some Slide Rock Bolter art. <laughs> or just post it on our Facebook page. I want it for the studio. Oh, okay. All I right. want it. Draw it like a giant angler fish or like a big duck. <laughs> a big duck. <laughs> like a duck billed platypus, like creating down the mountain. That's actually what people are seeing. Okay. Here's my other thing if it eats everybody, it goes near near it. How do they know what it looks like? Some all, someone always gets away at some point. You can't be a hundred percent accurate. You can't be a dragonfly when you're eating everything. Oh, I, we could quiz Ryan here at the end. Okay, test his knowledge. <laughs> Ryan, what two animals? Oh, no. They're predators. Have the best success rate for hunting. There's no way we get this right. Is one of them a dragonfly? That is number one. Correct. <laughs> okay. And what is it? It's uh, like 99% accurate. Like when it chooses a target to actually, like it only misses like one out of 100. That's actually crazy. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. There's there's one more that it depends on how people argue. This one is either better or the same as or just a tiny bit less than the dragonfly. I have I have no idea. I'm guessing it's another insect. Or nope, vertebrate. it's aquatic. Oh really? I don't know if I know, but I may guess. I'll let Ryan guess first. One more guess, Ryan. Come on. Oh man. Um. I mean, I don't. On the spot. Is it what? Yeah, like I said, I'm more I'm more of a microbio guy, but <laughs> is it like? <laughs> Do 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 do. I guess is it like a whale or something? No. Filter feeders technically don't classify yeah. as hu- active hunters. As, uh, hunters. <laughs> yeah. They are technically predators. They just don't classify as active hunters. Yeah. Hmm. Passive feeding. My guess is an assassin snail. Ooh, good guess, but wrong. Dang. Seahorses. Oh, seahorses. Mm-hmm. Because their prey. You know how slow seahorses move. Their prey moves even slower, and that their whole jaw system is designed to not miss them because of how slow seahorses are. Hmm. So they got they have to be accurate, or they will starve to death. <laughs> so all the ones a long time ago, natural selection, all the ones that weren't fast enough, just died. But no, um, you got. I think that's pretty much it for the slide rock bolter. I mean, there's just not a lot to these right, yeah. It's just a tail. Well, I want to. Do you have any ideas of what the lights might be? So, no. It sounded like you had a theory. The paranormal lights, like, I go everything from 
I guess if I had to put it on it, I would say something like some undocumented for for the the snake or the lizard head mountain lights, uh, where the Sidarak Bolter's eyes or whatever. I would have to say it's some type of organic animal that is having some kind of bioluminescent display, and it happens to like get in these big circles or something like that. Uh, I can think of some species of fungus that would do that. And for example, like do you like in Colorado and stuff like that, the moth hatched in the top of these mountains, the stones, literally the big grizzly bears that'll climb to their death to get these moth hatches out of these tops of these mountains. Hmm. Because there's so many moths pouring out of these like little cracks. Yeah. That it's worth it to them. Because they can get their like two, three months worth of uh, protein out of sitting in like one of these crevices and just eating every moth that comes out. Didn't know that. So it's crazy that maybe so it could be some kind of biomass insect, and that just happens to be how you know they breed as they group up in circles. And, you know, from a long distance away, it looks it looks like one or two big lights versus you know when you maybe get a little closer, you can see the individual lights or some kind of fungus or algae that's bioluminescent for whatever reason grows in circles. That's always the exact same distance apart, and there's I don't know. So if I had like because it's not like. It's not like the brown mountain lions and the fact that it doesn't move. Like when people see these, they're there. People have reported them like blinking out, like they are animals' eyes. So like you can like a giant eye is shutting. Mm. The uh, mountain is alive. People, people like, have, is it in a place where you can like go. Uh, yes and no. Uh, so there was one video I was watching somebody going to see the lights, and literally they were only like they were on the bottom of the mountain that the lights were on. They could see the lights actively. And it was like a four yeah. and a half hour like hike to get up it, and it was super dangerous because it's all loose shale rock. So yeah. you take one step and the whole half the mountain will come down with you wrong. You know, uh, so no, yes, I know people have tried to do it, but by the time you get up there, you know, four or five hours has passed. Yeah. The event's, you know, the event's pretty much over at that point. Yeah. And if it was a live animal, for if it's a big animal, it just moved away from you as it hears you cr- cr- uh, crawling up the mountain. side of the sh- shale cliff that every yeah. time you touch it, a billion pounds yeah. of rocks shifts. Hmm. Interesting. Or it is just a big angler fish and it's the lure. Right, exactly. That's mm. probably what it is. You just gotta have an open mind. Okay. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this episode, Ryan. Uh thank All you right. for being on here with us. Yep. We appreciate Thanks you. For having me. Uh we're looking forward to having Ryan's thoughts on some episodes. We're looking forward to working with you. Uh, got anything to say to all the people at home? Um, I guess look out for whatever I'm doing, even though I don't even know what I'm doing yet, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to do it, though, whatever it ends up being. All right. Yep. We're, Jay? We're excited to have you. Same. This is going to be a guess. journey. We're all on this journey Enjoy together. Hell yeah. So, Ryan, you know how we like to end it? At the count of three, we're all going to scream bye, and the outro music will play. Okay. All right, three, two, one, bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Crips of the Corn podcast. Please share with a friend you think would like us. It's the best way to help our show grow. Leave a comment, rate us, a five-star review. And remember, there is always extra content on Patreon slash Crips of the Corn.com. And don't forget, stay magical.